today I'm doing a video where I am talking about four books moving into 2024 that I really got a lot from in 2023. I was going to keep it to three, but I, I couldn't, so I've made it four. Uh, some of these books are Kindle and one is paperback. The last book in my list is potentially the most brilliant book I've ever read on such a topic so please stay tuned to the end of the video because that's the book I want to cover more. The first book is The Myth of Normal by Gaber Matei and his son Daniel Matei or Ma Matei. I'm not sure I I'm not great at pronouncing things already. Um, so this is the myth of normal trauma, illness, healing in a toxic culture. So the, the title is quite um, intense and it's a really, really chunky book. Hence why I got it in paperback, hardback. Um, and it covers so many things and I've, I've underlined so many things. And I read it in the summer and I remember um, we were playing in the garden and I could just open it and, and read a passage and then I'd read it like in bed or I'd read it um, other times. I wouldn't really take it out with me because it's a giant book, but um, but I read it a lot and I read it over time and I like bookmarked the pages so I can go back to things. Um, I like how he explores trauma in a different way and he explains some of his own stories and how he went out to meet people in tribes um, to do with like different types of medicine um, so he talks about nature human development um, adaptations and the toxicities of our culture that really interests me a lot um, and like pathways to wholeness as well um, so yeah this is a, a really great book definitely worth the money and the time on it the second book is Anne Patchett, Truth and Beauty. So I read this um, on my lunch breaks in the day and it's just such a brilliant, fascinating story of a friendship. It's so beautiful. Um, and Anne Patchett is such a great writer that whenever I find myself reading her, I write more and I'm able to express myself more and it really brought me back to times where technology wasn't as vast. A lot of times she writes about herself like in a, I don't know if this is this book or a different one, but she writes about it from a perspective of when we didn't have like mobile phones and things. So she wrote and wrote and wrote and it was such a, a goal for her to be writing. And she wrote letters to her friend who's in this book and it really talks about their friendship and just how deep and and how moving it is. It, it's just really incredible. I'm so glad I bought this one because it really did, oh, it really entertained me and made me happy and made me sad, all the different emotions. And it was like a whole journey going going through um, the, their, their friendship, the friendship she had with her, her, her closest friend. The third book, and this was the one I was like, mm, it has to go in the, it has to be a four because of this book. And because I found this book on YouTube and I'm filming for YouTube. So um, <laughs> this book has really helped me understand better about ADHD. Um, it has in the sense, because it's written by a woman and she's so honest and she, um explains like the practical but also explains the knowledge and there's a bit of science in there as well um and you can definitely learn a lot um between her and her partner's relationship as well um i love the title because we all have dirty laundry <laughs> so we always have we all have it so um and i think it's 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 uncovering that shame factor and it really helped me realise some things that may have happened in the past or hyper-focus or um, 
a lot of shame that I may have felt from other people's comments. Um, and it really helped me look into that a bit more. I found it on YouTube. Um, I was just on there and a woman was holding a, up her book on ADHD and I didn't realise that she did all these reels and stuff because I try not to go onto reels because I'm already distracted and then if I get more distracted, nothing happens. So <laughs> it just happened that I clicked it to see about her book and then I bought her book shortly after. So I'm really thankful that they have made a book and not just kept it to reels and Instagram posts for people that get distracted easily. I'm not trying to be ironic, that's just how I feel. The fourth and final book is Under the Yoga Mat by Els Conan and Guru Nishkam. So this book is really new and I really, really want to explore it a lot more. Um, so I don't know if any other a reader has ever had this experience, but when I was like a teen, all I did was read books. Admittedly, we only had five channels back then, but all I did was read books and I'd read them like that so quick. And this is what happened with this book. I read it in like three days and I didn't just sit there and read straight. I had other things to do in life. But this book was so detailed, so informative, and so like gripping me to the edge of my seat that I read it in three days. Haven't had that feeling for such a long time. Okay, so if we look at the title under the yoga mat and we ignore these these little um, these little bits of writing here, I think that should be your focus if you are getting into the wellness industry. If you are thinking about a kundalini yoga teacher training, if you're thinking about going to white tantric, this book is an incredible book because all of the things in it are relevant today. The history of kundalini yoga, the history of Yogi Bhajan who created kundalini yoga. Because what I'm seeing in a lot of um, posts on training and um, classes, workshops, all of that is that no one is stating that Yoga Bhajan was the creator of Kundalini Yoga because of this uncovering how much of a cult it was. And while I understand that's great for people's marketing and things and promotion and making money, and I understand people have to make money and if their skills are in that, that is what they're going to do. However, um, It's, it's a complete um, disrespect to put Guru Nanak's name in there instead. And that's what I've seen happening. So this is the dark history of Yogi Bhajan's Kundalini Yoga. So in this, I find it a really, really great format as well, in the sense that it talks you over the historian's account of Kundalini Yoga. Because as I've mentioned in a different video I did many years ago, which probably isn't uh, as up to date about how I feel now. And I could do another video potentially in the future. I'd like to cover um, Stephen Hassan's bite model. Um, but so, who's <laughs> in my train of thought because I'm so passionate. Um, so under the yoga mat, it focuses on the historical view from two historians. One historian that was around in the 70s and one historian who is more uh, current in like the 90s onwards. Um, and their accounts are, are so important because Kundalini Yoga derives a lot of what it is known for from the Sikh faith because Yogi Bhajan was a Sikh. He was brought up in a Sikh and Hindu family. And I think that's really important to recognise that so many of Kundalini Yoga is from Sikh scripture. And again, it's not being portrayed as, as that, which is irresponsible, unethical and disrespectful to Sikhs. And then it goes on to all of the 
conversations Guru Nish Khan has had on the Uncomfortable Conversations podcast. And it really paints the picture of what it was like in the 70s onto the 90s. And then it talks about further on and just just all of the things that were happening. And it covers transcripts of Yogi Bhajan's lectures on the Library of Teachings. And I think it's a book for you if you want to discover what's really behind kundalini yoga if if you just want to go to a yoga class and stretch and and feel good again i'd say choose a different yoga like i did before but i'd say if you're going to go all into something don't just listen to this is the yoga of awareness become more aware through reading people's experiences this follows on from premka by Pamela Dyson, and some of that is written in here. However, I want to put it forward that this is not one woman's stories, it's hundreds of women's and children's stories, because there was a lot of child abuse that happened within Kundalini Yoga as well. And all of this is relevant now because there are so many control tactics within Kundalini Yoga, and all of Kundalini Yoga, aside from Sat Kriya, was made up by Yogi Bhajan, who, in this book, you come to understand as a sociopath and a cult leader. So it's a heavy topic, it's a heavy read, but it's a worthwhile read. And I think anyone and everyone can read this, um, especially if you've been told on teacher training not to read it. Why not? Take a look and see if you like it, because you're here to grow yourself and you can learn from others' experiences and learn what really is sits right with you. <laughs> so that has been my list of books. Um, just to recap, The Myth of Normal, Gabe and Matei, Truth and Beauty, and Pratchett, and Dirty Laundry. Oh, I forgot to say who it was by. Oh no. Let me go back. By Richard Pink and Roxanne Emery. And of course, Under the Yoga Mat. Because we all have something under our yoga mats. <laughs> this video was made by Taryn. Happy holidays, everybody. See you in the new year. <laughs>